Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Sunday Dinner for a Soldier, starring Ann Baxter, John Hodiak, and Charles Winninger. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Jesse L. Lasky. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that most war agencies agree that what a soldier wants most on a furlough isn't special celebration or exciting entertainment, but a touch of simple home life. And throughout the land, American homes have opened their doors and hearts to lonely servicemen on leave. And from this friendly gesture has sprung many stimulating and amusing situations, many lifelong friendships and romances, and perhaps occasional heartbreak in the bargain. Which it is in tonight's Lux Radio Theater play, I'll leave you to find out. The play itself is from the brand new 20th Century Fox hit, Sunday Dinner for a Soldier. And our stars are Ann Baxter, John Hodiak, and Charles Winninger, all in their original screen roles. We're lucky to have them with us because John Hodiak is busy at Metro Golden Mayor working with Judy Garland and the Harvey Girls, while at 20th Century Fox, Ann Baxter is making the screen version of a royal scandal, and Charles Winninger is busy with the Technicolor Picture State Fair. Now, if our play inspires you to fill your home with servicemen, so much the better. But there are many other things that you can do for those boys and girls in uniform, away from home. Letters, for instance, the mail letters, full of hometown news and gossip, and packages full of little luxuries that make life easier away from home. And I think I'm right in including among those luxuries a package of Lux Flakes, letters we get from overseas, and the servicemen and women both suggest how heartily Lux is appreciated in all corners of the globe. From the burliest top sergeant who must launder his own linen to the prettiest whack who cherishes her daintiness Lux Flakes may be the next best thing to Sunday dinner for a soldier. Now, under the first act of tonight's play, starring Ann Baxter as Tessa, John Hodiak as Eric, and Charles Winninger as Grandfather Osborne. We rolled in a few minutes ago from mission number 58. The colonel called us in and told us, we're leaving England tomorrow, Tessa. We're coming home. We're coming home. I'm here alone on a great stretch of empty beach. I sit and I watch the waves come in. I talk to you, Tessa, just as if you were sitting beside me. So darn good to talk to you. Will you know me, Tessa? Will you know what I look like? How long did we know each other? Nine hours. Nine hours and 20 minutes. Yet I do know you. You and Grandfeathers and the kids. I felt that I knew you from the minute I stumbled in on you. Then there have been your letters, so many wonderful letters. They've taught me everything I wanted to know about all of you. I wonder if it'll all be just like it was when I left. The houseboat where you live, tied up in a corner of the lagoon with a crazy rickety footbridge going across the water to the other side. I remember how we used to fly over there every day and dip our wings and you'd all wave your hands at us. Then there was a day we came over real low. You and Mike getting out of his cat boat. Grandfeathers. <laughs> Grandfeathers was puffing along the sand, chasing that little brown hen of Mary's, as usual. Gold, gold, blasted, confounded, bird of prey. Grandfeathers, the airplane. He's dipping his wings. He's dipping his wings. Well, wave to him. Wave. Grandfeathers, look out. <laughs> now you did it. You still right in the oyster's egg. Oh, that miserable hen laid it there on purpose. The minute she saw, I didn't have my shoes on. <laughs> Oh, sass me, will you? Why, I... will do what, Grandfather? Oh, <laughs> hello, Tessa. Poor Miss Easter. Come here, honey. Did you catch any crabs, Mike? We sure did. Fourteen. You were going to be all ready when we got back, Grandfathers. Well, I would have been if that hideous hen hadn't tried to trip me with an egg. Now, the bus is due in ten minutes. Here are the crabs. Tessa. At 16 cents apiece, that's $2.24. 
Now, I've got a list of things to get in town. Oh, there's the bus, Tessa. I better hurry. Mr. York always waits for ten minutes, and you know it. You just don't want to sell the crab. Uh, Tessa, dear, what will people think if I... You go straight to Bannock's fish market, and if he tries to... I am not going to bandy words with a fishmonger. My pension is due today. We'll have plenty of money. Not if we're having a soldier to dinner Sunday a week. Oh, gee. I really ought to go in town with you, I guess. Fine. <laughs> you take the crabs. We'll make a day of it. No. No, I can't go. Michael will go. Me, Tessa? I'm trusting you, Mike. Remember, every penny counts, so don't let him buy anything foolish this time. Sure, Tessa. Hey, Mary, find Grandfather's shoes, will you? And hurry up. Well, Ben Feathers, looks like you and Mike's only two passengers. Hey, how come Tess ain't going to town with you all? Oh, too busy, I guess. The busiest little woman on this whole route. I know why she didn't come, Grandfeathers. Huh? Why, Michael? Because she hasn't got a dress. Not a decent one. Oh, so that's the reason. Michael, would you know a good-looking dress if you saw one? Oh, I think so. Why? We're going to buy Tessa the best-looking dress in town. Nah, she likes wearing pants. Do you think you could sell these crabs at Bannock's Fish Market? Uh-uh. Why not? Because you could get a better price. Oh, I could, huh? Well, drag them out, Michael. Looks like we're getting into town. Like you wrote me, Grandfather sure had his troubles with those crabs. When he went into the post office to get his pension check, those town kids started scrapping with Mike. While he was trying to hold his own, a couple of other kids stole every one of those 14 crabs. But Michael and Grandfathers didn't know that. Yes, the boys took the crabs, but they left the basket carefully weighted down with a couple of bricks. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, Michael! Michael! What is an Osborne brawling in the streets? They started at Grandfathers. They called us fish peddlers. And not a truer word was ever... <clears throat> Come along, my boy. We'll convert my check into some real moolah. Yes, sir. Hey, the crabs, we almost forgot them. Oh, yes, 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 yes. so we did, yes. Mr. Osborne! Oh, Mr. Osborne! Look, it's Mrs. Butterfield. Oh, could anyone fail to distinguish that screech owl? If those are crabs you've got, I want them, Mr. Osborne. Turn a deaf ear, my boy. Turn two deaf ears. I'll be with you just as soon as I deliver my chickens. Now, don't you run away. Walk faster, Michael. But she said she wanted the crabs. What that conniving female desires is a fourth husband. She's a nice lady, though. She gave Miss Easter to marry and... Oh, now, let's duck into the bank and then straight to Norman's department store. With any luck, we'll shake off uh, and get... Come on, we'll get Tessa a new dress. Well, they bought the dress, all right, but they didn't shake off Agatha Butterfield. An hour later, they were in the USO arranging to get that soldier for dinner. Door opened. Good morning, Agatha. Uh, hello, Mrs. Dobson. I saw you come in here, Mr. Osborne. Uh, the witch has the eyes of a goshawk. If he wore a toga, Mrs. Dobson, he'd look just like one of those handsome Caesars of ancient Rome. Oh, such a cute, curly beard. Cute and curly. <laughs> I'll shave it off in the morning. Now, uh, about that basket of crabs. Madam, the contents of this basket are not crabs. They're family heirlooms. Worth a fortune. Of course they're crabs, and you've got to sell them to me. I'm entertaining. That's exactly what I shall be doing. Is he telling the truth, Michael? Oh, yes, ma'am. Mrs. Hmm. Dobson, the USO acts as liaison between soldier and civilian population, I believe. Oh, yes, of course. I am a civilian, am I not? Well, be kind enough to have a soldier at my houseboat a week from Sunday. Well, certainly. Just fill out this card. Thank you. I'll pester you until you let me buy those crabs. Oh, then take them. Here, madam, I give them to you. Grandfather. Oh, I do thank you, Mr. Osborne. Thank you. Kindly refrain from licking my hand. <laughs> have the soldier at my residence at six bells, Mrs. Dobson. That will give the lad plenty of time to plunge off my private beach before dinner. Good morning, ladies. I shall come on. Well, Agatha, how many boys for your dinner? Eight, tomorrow night. Oh, make it ten. There's a B-17 crew here. Well, fine. Goodness knows with a chicken farm, I'll have plenty for them to eat. Oh, wait a second, and I'll speak to their pilot. He's inside. Fine. I want to take a look at these lovely crabs anyway. <laughs> so, bricks. Oh, that horrible man. That dreadful man. I... Oh, Mrs. Dobson. Yes? Where's the card Mr. Osborne filled out? I bet he didn't answer half the questions. It's on my desk. B-17. 
fix it up, will you, Agatha? You bet I'll fix it up in just two seconds. There, you nasty old man. Soldier for dinner, uh, that'll show you. <laughs> And he's got presents for everybody. Colored pictures and everything. What's in this package, Grand Feathers? A brand new sail for Michael's boat. And in this big box. That's for Tessa. Lordy, lordy, just like Christmas. Grand Feathers, you didn't. Open it, child. Open the box and see. It's a dress. I bet it's a dress. Well? <laughs> Do you like it? But, yes, but... Good. After all, we can't have you running around in pants with a soldier coming to dinner. I don't think he is coming to dinner. Tessa, why not? You said he could come. Run along, you kids. Play outside. Yes, Tessa. Bet you'll beat you, Mary. Bet you'll beat All right, Grandfathers. Hand it over. Hmm? Did you say something, Tessa? The money. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Well, it's not as much as you may suppose. Prices are high. Hand it over. Well, here. Where's the rest? There isn't any rest. Well, what happened to all of it? How much did you get for the crabs? Well, as a matter of fact, I gave the crabs away. Gave them away? I showed you my budget. You seem to understand we could make it this month if we were careful. Tessa, you take things so seriously. We'll get along. Oh, I just don't know what to do. Oh, <laughs> I saw Kenneth Norman in town today. A oh, fine fellow, Kenneth. <laughs> See him tonight like a good girl. I settled that once and for all. All I did was to send you in town with a basket of crabs, and look what happens. You spent all the money I counted on for the soldier's dinner. You needed a dress. I'll never wear it. Oh, I should have sent Michael by himself. Michael? Where is he? Hmm? Isn't he here? He said he'd see me at home. If that young How rascal... How could you be so thoughtless? No telling what's happened to him. Why, Tessa, Tessa, where are you going? I'm going to find Michael. Tessa! Wait a minute. Tessa. Gee, thanks a lot for the lift, Mrs. Butterfield. Um, how are you all doing, Michael? Oh, we're doing fine, Mrs. Butterfield. It's a lot of fun living on a houseboat. Say, you don't need anybody to help part-time, maybe, at your chicken farm. Luella and I manage fine. But if we ever do, I'll certainly send for you. You're a fine boy. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Butterfield. Goodbye. And don't forget to tell that grandfather of yours never to speak to me again. Bricks. Michael? Michael? Hi, Tessa. Michael, where were you? In town. Is grandfather's home yet? Yes, he's home. Did he buy a lot of things? I tried to stop him, Tessa, honest. Oh, I know. We just have to remember that all his life, grandfather's never had to worry about money or responsibility till we dumped ourselves on his hands. Now I guess it's too late for him to learn. Yeah. If it weren't for us, grandfathers wouldn't have to think much about money. Well, someday maybe we can move to a big town where I can get a job and... Hey, hey what's that? Your hands. They're all scratched. What have you been doing? I... I've been scraping fish for Mr. Bannock. Here, Tessa. Michael. He paid me 45 cents an hour. I guess this won't pay for all the stuff grandfathers bought, but... Oh, Mike. It'll be kind of nice seeing you in a dress, Tessa. A new dress. Will it? I'll wear it tonight, then, just for you. Well, let's get on home. Yes, that's how you got the new dress, Tessa. You told me all about it in your first letter, remember? And that night, you went out walking on the beach, all alone. You walked to that hotel they never finished building. Just a skeleton of a building. Relic of a real estate boom. We used to see it from the air. Lonesome, deserted, sand swept. But there was magic for you in that ruined hotel, wasn't there? If you half closed your eyes, you'd see happy people dancing. Beautiful clothes. You'd hear an orchestra playing some swell number. You'd dance in the sand like in a dream. Tessa? Hey, Tessa. Oh, hello, Kenneth. What on earth were you doing? Were you dancing? Sure. I stopped by the houseboat. They told me you went for a walk. Why do you always come to this gloomy old place anyway? Because they have such wonderful music. For heaven's sake, Tessa. Now stop clowning and listen to me. How do you feel? Oh, fine. Good. Tessa, you know what I want to say, don't you? I think so. I've wanted to take care of you ever since the first day you came down here. Kenneth, sooner or later I'll have to tell you this. I just don't Don't know... say it, Tessa, not yet. 
Come on, think of the fun we could have. We'd go to Miami for a honeymoon, and since you seem to like hotels so much, why, we'd stop at the best hotel in Miami. Instead of that bracelet you're wearing, you'd have one with diamonds. My mother gave me this one. Your clothes? You'd have the pick of our store. And we could live in one of Dad's houses until after the war. And Michael? And, and Mary and Jeep? They'd be better off, really. We could send Michael to school in Virginia, the same one I went to. He'd be with boys his own age. You get a housekeeper to look after your grandfather and Mary and Jeep. I have the right kind of food, regular hours, everything they need. The way you put it, I'd seem selfish to refuse. Marry me, Tessa. You'll never be sorry. Never. Oh, I'm all mixed up, Kenneth. I want to talk to Grandfather. Sure, and I know what he'll say. He told me this afternoon. What? That you have a life of your own to live. Tessa, you do like me, don't you? Oh, yes. A lot, an awful lot. And I... Well, I... I think we'd better start walking back. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Seems to me you sent Kenneth home awful early, Tessa. Yes. Oh, look. Oleander Bush has got a butt. Never mind that freak Bush. What about him? I only loved him, Grandfathers. Oh, your grandma didn't love me when we got married. That came later on. If I could only have Mary and Jeep. They're such little children. Well, you can't expect Kenneth to fill the honeymoon cottage with other people's children. They're not other people's children. They're my brother and sister. Do you think they'd be better off? Well, they'd have security. Something I failed to give them. Tessa, this is your one chance to be free. Take it. I'm not so sure I would be free. Or if I want to be. Oh, well, Kenneth's going north tomorrow. I have a whole week to make up my mind. What about the children and the plans they've been making for Sunday week? Oh, the dinner for the soldier. Mm. Well, the best thing to do is tell Mrs. Dobson we're calling it off. No. Oh. Still, it would be nice to have a party. In case I... Mm-hmm. A sort of last celebration to look back on and remember. Yes, we'll have that soldier for dinner. Can we manage it? I don't know how, but we will. There's one way we could manage. Oh? Certainly. Grandfathers. Sure. Not Mary's hen. Not Miss Easter. Well, she'd probably be tougher than a bosun's mate, but there's no point in letting her pass on of old age. Oh, I'd feel like a cannibal. Well, I'd rather think I'd enjoy it. How else are you going to give a chicken dinner to a soldier? I don't know, but it won't be Miss Easter. Well, good night, Grandfather's coming to bed. Well, a little while. A little while. Mary, aren't you asleep yet? Uh-uh. Tessa, can I sleep with you tonight? Sure. Come on over in my bed. Your legs don't hurt again, do they, dear? Uh-uh. They're getting better every day. Oh, that's fine. I've got something to tell you, Mary. We're really going to have that soldier for dinner. Aren't you glad? Oh, yes. Tessa. Yes? I've been remembering Mother and Daddy. We must always remember them. I've known for a long time, Tessa. They didn't just go away. They were hurt in the automobile. They died. Why does everything have to die, Tessa? Because dying is a part of living, dear. For all we know, it may be the best part. It's like the books Grandfather's brought you today. You can't tell what's inside till you open them. Oh, they're full of colored pictures. Pink castles made out of coral and starfish and wavy green grass at the bottom of the sea. Yes, beautiful things. Things you could never imagine just from looking at the outside. That's all we see, Mary. Just the outside of death. The cover. But where did they go, Mother and Daddy? Mm, Sometimes I think they're right here with us. When Michael gave me the money he earned this afternoon, I saw Mother's goodness looking out of his eyes. And when Jeep toots his whistle and laughs, it's like... It's like Daddy teasing and having fun. And right now, with us, it's like when Mother and I used to talk. Only it's as if... I were mother, and you were me. I want to be like you, Tessa. You know so much and make everything right. Do I, darling? Thank you. Good night, Tessa. Good night, dear. In just a moment, our stars will return with Act Two of Sunday Dinner for a Soldier. 
Right now, I've got a question here for two of the ladies in our audience. Would you mind coming up here a moment? Me? Yes, uh, if you don't mind. A and you. Oh, my. Thank you. There. Now, what I want to ask you is, how long do your stockings wear? Not very long, I can tell you. Why, I've worn these only a few times. Yes, I bought them last week. And they just ran. Look. Hmm, that's too bad. Uh, how's your luck? Why, I've had these quite a while. Do you remember when you got them? Let's see. Yes, it was a Monday, just about a month ago. I wear them every other day. Well, I always let rayons dry 24 hours, of course. And no runs yet? That's right. Heavens, I'm lucky if my stockings last half a dozen times. How do you wash yours? Oh, whenever I'm doing a wash, I put them in. Or if I haven't much, I use the cake soap in the kitchen. Does that make much difference? We'll see. How about you? Why, I always lux mine every time I wear them. And that's very likely the answer to your stocking problem. You see, it's been proved that lux helps stockings last longer. A famous laboratory made a series of strain tests. Stockings washed with lux flakes didn't go into runs nearly so quickly as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with strong soap. In fact, they lasted twice as long. I'm sure you'll have better luck with yours if you change to lux. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of Sunday Dinner for a Soldier, starring Ann Baxter as Tessa, John Hodiak as Eric, and Charles Winninger as grandfathers. Like a bridge spanning the dark Atlantic, the thoughts of Eric Moore dissolve all distances as he daydreams of a little family on a Florida lagoon and how he came to know them. You wrote me so much, Tessa. How can I thank you? It's as if I really had been there all that week while you planned your Sunday dinner for a soldier. You wrote me about Mary and her hen, how she saw that strange look in Grandfather's eye. Ran quickly to Miss Easter's coop, her lucky starfish in her hand. So don't be scared about Grandfather's, Miss Easter. Nothing can hurt you when you've got this. You just sit on my lucky starfish when you get scared. What are you telling her, Mary? What's Miss Easter to be scared about? Grandfather's wants to give her to the soldier. What for? For dinner. Oh. But Tessa told Grandfather she'd figure some other way out. Mary, come here this instant. Yes, Tessa? You fill my washed up with seashells. Now dump them out at once. Look, Tessa, Miss Easter's laid an egg for the soldier's cake. Well, put it in the icebox. Michael, how many times do I have to tell you to beat those rugs? But I did beat him, Tessa. I just finished. A capital ship on an ocean trip on the water being blue. Grandfather's! Huh? Is that all you've got to do? Well, you know, I, I, I happened to find an E-string in the bottom drawer under some socks. I thought you said you'd fix the water faucet. I did fix it. Oh, sure. You fixed it just fine. I turned it on, the whole thing flew apart. The kitchen just about flooded out, and you played that violin. Now, Tessa, Tessa. What do you think this is? Here I'm trying to make this miserable shack look decent, and what do you do? Rip and ruin every miserable rag and stick of furniture we've got. Oh, gee, Tessa, we've only been trying to help. Well, don't. I'm better off without your help. I... Oh, what's the use? Oh, Tessa. Oh, Dear Tessa. Oh, look at you. The whole bunch. I believe you're all scared to death of me. Tessa, don't be mad at me, Tessa. <laughs> Darling, I'm sorry. I don't know what got into me. What can I do, Tessa? You can pick up all the leaves in the front yard. Yes, ma'am. And us, Tessa? Mike on me? You fix the curtains while I clean up the kitchen. Then go pick the berries for the cake. And you, Grandfather. I won't do a thing, I promise. Oh, yes, you will. You fix that faucet. Oh, you're sure. Run along, you kids. Run along. Uh, you going into town before lunch? Yes. And don't you dare do anything about, you know, until I get home. You mean... Exactly. <laughs> oh, there's no use procrastinating the inevitable. Inevitable. I may be able to buy one. Uh, what? A chicken? <laughs> where will you get the money to buy another chicken? Never mind where. Just promise to keep away from Miss Easter. Well, then you see that she keeps away from me. Gosh, I wish Tessa would come home. Now sit still, Jeep. I've been sitting still. All day I've been here by the road sitting still. But we just gotta say, Miss Easter, 
If somebody buys the berries, we'll have enough money and they won't have to eat her up. But nobody stops to buy berries, and I'm hungry. Eat some more berries. I've been eating them all day, and I don't feel good. Please don't cry, G. I want to go home. Look, a car's coming. Berries! Berries! The car's going to stop. It's Miss Butterfield's car. Hello, Barry. Gee. Hello. Would you like to buy some berries? Heavens no. Gives me the hives. Itch all over just looking at them. <laughs> Say, what's the matter with him? He's hungry. What well, the poor little fellow. He hasn't had anything to eat all day. That man. That dreadful man. Sending helpless babies to earn the very bread he puts in his mealy old mouth. It's Miss Eastry wants to put in his mealy old mouth. I love her so much. We just can't eat her tomorrow. Well, I should hope not. Uh, Luella. Yes, ma'am. Hand me that big fryer. It's on the back seat. You mean this young one for the Normans? Yeah, that's it. Here you are, you poor babies. Chester says we aren't allowed to accept presents. Then I'll swap the chicken for the berries. Luella likes them. Oh, no, Miss Butterfield. I don't relish no berries. you like them, Luella. <laughs> Here. Here. Oh, oh, that's plenty, Mary. Thank you. Now what's the matter with him? Gee, oh, he always stands on his head and blows his whistle. That's when he's happy. He feels good now because we've got a chicken for the soldier tomorrow. For who tomorrow? The soldier. We're going to have one for dinner tomorrow. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Grandfather signed a card for one at the USO. We've been getting ready all week. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. And thanks. Thanks again and again, Mrs. Butterfield. You're welcome. Oh, Luella, this is terrible. Giving away Miss Norman's fryer. Not that. I'm thinking of that car that tore up at the USO, you know. Yes, ma'am. What can I do? Miss Butterfield, mm. you eating those berries? Those children are expecting a soldier tomorrow. Yeah, but they gives you the highs. You'll be itching for a month. What did you say? They've simply got to get a soldier. Oh, Lordy. I'll have to tell Mrs. Dobson exactly what happened to get her to find them another one. And um, hand me some more berries, Luella. Yes. Grandpa, there's Michael. Tess is home. Tess is home. Tess Tess take is it home. easy, you kids. Look what I've got. A chicken. A chicken. And look what we got. We got a chicken, too. A what? We sold the berries, Tessa. We sold them for a chicken to Mrs. Butterfield. But that's wonderful. Hello, Tessa. I saw you in town. You what? I saw you, but you didn't see me. I was working. And look what I bought. Don't tell me another chicken. Uh-huh. Here. Mr. Bannock let me clean his barrels. Hey, where did these chickens come from? He bought it with berries. For the soldier. And you bought the other one? Uh-huh. Where'd you get the money? None of your business. Now, where's Grandfather's? I'm right here. <laughs> Better batten down the hatches, lad. She's going to blow a gale. Michael, stow away the deck chair. Boy, I better. We'll go cover up Easter. Oh, now, wait a second, child. Wait a second. I just happened by Easter's nest, and the dear little Billy seems to have disappeared. What? Oh, look at the sky. It's getting blacker and blacker. I gotta find her. I gotta find Miss Easter. 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 Grandfathers. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Tessa, dear. Come here this instant. Oh. What's that you're hiding under your jacket? Oh, this? Oh, oh this is uh, my tobacco pouch. Let me see it. Oh, really, Tessa? A chicken. Dead chicken. Oh, no. I wanted to surprise you. Is that chicken, Miss Easter? Shh. Does this bird look like Miss Easter? How can I tell? It's been dressed. Well, it's uh, it's not Miss Easter. Then exactly where did you get it? As you so pointedly remarked to my grandson, it's none of your business. Did I ask you how you got your chicken? No. But I've got a pretty good idea. The bracelet your dear mother gave you is gone. Oh, never mind the act. If that's not Miss Easter, where is she? Easter? Easter? Mary, dear, you'd better come in. you get drenched. Easter? I begged you not to do anything till I got back. Oh, how did I know you're all come back dripping naked flowers? Oh, you're hopeless. Sometimes I think you'd even steal. Ah. And if you think I'm going to tell Mary about Miss Easter, you're crazy. You can do your own dirty work and do it now. Grandfathers managed to avoid the mystery of Easter's disappearance till night. Mary was in bed crying softly to herself when the old man sneaked into her room. For me to tell you a story, Mary? No, Grandfather. Oh, well, 
It's still raining. I know. Oh, now, young woman, when I told you that Miss Easter escaped her roost, I fear I was guilty of a slight distortion of the truth. If you just asked you. If I had been consulted as becomes the head of the house, things like this wouldn't happen. As it is, I've been treated like an epidemic. Oh, no, Grandfathers. I guess maybe the feaster didn't mind too much, seeing it was for a soldier. But I won't be able to eat any dinner tomorrow. Now, here, now, shh. Now, hold on a minute. That isn't Miss Easter in the icebox. Oh, Grandfathers, please don't tell any more fibs. I am relating the plain unvarnished. This afternoon, finding myself alone, Miss Easter and I visited Mrs. Butterfield's chicken farm. I deposited Miss Easter among her other live chickens, and in exchange, I, uh, well, uh, I succeeded in making my way safely home with one of her dressed fowls. Honest? Honest. And now, since we find our galley overflowing with hens, I see no reason why I shouldn't return the purloined bird to Madam Butterfly and carry Miss Easter home again. When? When will you do it? <laughs> Tonight. Now. And don't you dare tell Tessa I'm a chicken thief. This is our secret. Understand? Oh, yes. Shh. Shh. Oh, thank you, Grandfathers. Quiet. Quiet, you gall-blasted chickens. Now, how am I going to tell who's who around here? Easter. Easter. Where are you, you feathered fiend? Come here. Can't even see where I'm going. Can't even... Oh, don't! Oh, stow your gab. Pull in your sails. Shut up. Who's there? Who's in there? Ain't Who's nobody... There? Ain't nobody here but us chickens, ma'am. Luella, is that you? All right, stop for I'll shoot. One, two, three. Oh. Did I get him, Luella? No, ma'am. But here's the chickens he must have been carrying. That's some shooting, Miss Agatha. Look at here. You done plucked, clean, and drawn this here chicken all in one shot. <laughs> Hello? Hello, that you, Mrs. Dobson? Yes. Agatha Butterfield. Oh, I've been waiting for you to call me. Sorry, I got delayed. Chicken thief. Chicken thief? And I know who it is, all right. I found his cane. Well, who? Well, never mind. Now, what about that soldier? Did you find one for the Osborns? Oh, I'm afraid it's just no use, Agatha. A lot of the boys have been shipped out, and the rest seem to have passes. But I'll try again in the morning. Oh, please. We've got to get a soldier for those poor children. We've got to. <laughs> Good morning, children. Good morning, morning Grandfather. Grand well, it's a nice day after all. Rain's gone, sun's out. In two hours, our soldiers should be here. What makes the rain, Grandfathers? Rain is made by weathermen, my boy. Weathermen predicting sunshine. <laughs> the strangest thing. One of the chickens is gone from the icebox. Gone? It can't be. Well, come and look. You can't come. Well, Mary? Miss Easter's still missing, Grandfathers. Oh, don't you worry. I encountered a little difficulty last night, but I saw her, and she just looks fine. I'll get her back for you yet. Hey, Mary! Mike! Here comes a bus! I heard it! Excuse me, Grandfathers. Our soldier, maybe he's here. Did you see him, James? Did you say him? Hey, come back, you kids. Breakfast is ready. Let him go. Let him go. Uh, I want to talk to you, Tessa. Have you made up your mind about Kenneth Norman? He'll be home tomorrow. Yes. You're going to marry him? It is the best thing for everyone, isn't it? Oh, I'm sure of it. it. means breaking up the family. Old families must be broken up so new ones can be built. Kenneth's got good character, fine family, money. Everything's going to be fine, Tessa. At least everything's going to be fine today. This must be a celebration that children will never forget. The soldier wasn't on that bus, was he, Tessa? Or the one after that, or the one after that. 
No, there just wasn't a soldier to be found anywhere in town that Sunday. Well, it's nearly one o'clock. Where are the children? Where they've been all morning? Still waiting at the road. Grandfathers, exactly what did Mrs. Dobson say when you signed up for a soldier? Well, I don't know ex her exact words. Well, try to remember, dear, please. Well, let me see. She said, uh, the USO acts as liaison between soldiers and civilians. He'll be here at six bells. That'll give him plenty of time. Or did I say that? Well, if he isn't on this bus, we'll just have to go ahead. Well, <clears throat> he'll be on this one, Tessa. I just know he'll be on this one. He didn't come again, Mr. York? Nope, not this trip, kids. Gosh, I looked all over town for a soldier. Bowling alleys, churches, everywhere. I was going to take him out in my boat. Maybe there won't be any wind left by the time he comes. Look, I, uh, I don't know how to say this, but I just can't see you kids waiting around all day for somebody who's not coming. Not coming? Now, I seen Mrs. Dobson. She said for me to tell you they uh, just can't find you a soldier anywhere. Grandfather said we'd have a soldier. I know, but there's been some kind of a mix-up somewhere. Look, he's coming there on the beach. That's him. A soldier? It's our soldier. Soldier? Soldier! Well, it's a miracle. A dud blasted genuine miracle. Yes, there was a soldier on the beach. Just walking along, killing the time of day. And all of a sudden, three kids rushed toward him across the sand. Believe me, Tessa, he just didn't know what to make of it. Well, hello. We knew you'd come. We knew it. But what happened? Happened? Nothing happened. We can swim from my boat when we go out sailing. <laughs> oh, we can? Who's we? Just you and me. I'm Michael. I'm Mary. And this one's Jeep. Well. <laughs> we live over there on a houseboat. Oh, now I know. You wave at the planes, don't you? Was it you who dipped your wings over time? Well, not exactly. I'm a waste gunner myself, but I have an in with a pilot. I can stand on my head and whistle. You know why I stand on my head? Sure, because it makes you feel good. I'll go tell Grandfathers and Tessa you're here. Yeah. Hey, no, no, wait a minute. I'll be right back. I scrubbed on my shelves to show you, and we're having fried chicken for dinner. Three fried chicken. Uh, now, look, you kids, I'd like to oblige you, but this has gone far enough. Whoever you were expecting, well, I'm not it. Oh, but you are. Of course you are. Hurry, hurry. Wait till you meet Grandfathers. Wait till you meet Tesla. And here, see? That's a Rolliander bush. It's a freak. Unique. It's a unique freak. <laughs> he means it doesn't know how to make flowers. Here we are, Grandfathers. And he's here. He's here. Well, hello, soldier. How do you do? My name is Moore, sir. Eric Moore. Osborne, Sergeant. Chief Petty Officer like Gergus Osborne. Retired. Well, I don't know what this is all about, but... Tessa, this is Sergeant Eric Moore. She's my granddaughter. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for coming. I'm sorry, but I think there's been a mistake of some kind. This is one day you won't have to think. <laughs> we're going to take care of everything. Aren't we, children? Oh, well, we're going to have the best time. <laughs> well, good. Dinner's all ready. Shall we go in? Well, just give me a second. I know I'll wake up. Things like this don't happen to a lug like me. Just let me dream on a while. Look, it's clouding up again. But look behind the cloud. See? The sun, the sun's out full. Yes, and look, look, the oleander bush has a blossom. Well, so it has. That's the first flower we've ever had. The bud's always dropped off before. And what a pretty color. Here, sniff. It stinks real pretty. Gee, please, it smells. It smells. It must have known this is a very special day. Yes, Tessa, a very special day. Well, come on, let's get aboard. Let's have our dinner. Come on. We'll return with Act Three of Sunday Dinner for a Soldier in a moment. You've heard us tell about those washing tests a famous laboratory made on rayon slips in the 90s. Well, let's imagine you were actually at the laboratory. You might have said... My, what lovely slips. What are you going to do with them? We're going to wash them. Now, for this group, we'll use hot water, strong soap, and plenty of action. The way women sometimes treat their underthings. And the others? These will wash the Lux way, with lukewarm water and gentle Lux flakes. As you see, the slips are just alike. So we'll wash each one the same number of times and see what happens. So the laboratory washed each group of slips repeatedly. 
And then... Why, just look at those slips. It's hard to believe they started out the same. Yet the only difference was the way we washed them. Those badly faded ones must be those you did by the wash day method. Goodness, how those straps frayed. I'll never do my slips that way. The Luxlands look lovely. And the record shows they stayed lovely three times as long. Yes, and they still look nice as new. The color's bright, straps firm. And that's how Gentle Lux will leave your under things, too. They'll stay new looking three times longer with Gentle Lux Care. Undies lead a long life when they lead a Lux life. Now, Mr. Lasky returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll bring our stars to the footlights for a brief chat. And I think you'll want to listen in. Now, here's Act Three of Sunday Dinner for a Soldier, starring Ann Baxter as Tessa, John Hodiak as Eric, and Charles Winninger as Grandfathers. Somewhere in England, a soldier waits to come home. And as he waits, he puts together each fragment of remembrance and lives again the most important day in all his life, the day he found the Osborne family, or rather, the day they found him. I soon discovered how I happened to be having Sunday dinner with the Osbournes. Just one of those little whims of fate that dropped me on their beach at the exact moment when they wanted a soldier more than anything else in the world, any soldier. Well, we sat down to dinner. Grandfather's had a big platter of fried chicken in front of him. At the time, of course, I didn't know about Mary's hen, Miss Easter. Well, Grandfather's, go ahead and serve. Uh, a piece of white and a piece of dark for the sergeant. I hope you like fried chicken. There's nothing finer, is there, Mary? Please, may I be excused? Oh, Mary, dear. Please. Now, we're not going to have any nonsense. Eat your dinner. But I can't any dinner. <laughs> Woman, I give you my solemn word. The chickens on this platter are total strangers. <laughs> it's not who it's not who you think it is. Oh, now why did you have to say that? Never mind, never mind. Sit, sit down, Tessa. I'll get her. Mary. Mary, dear, Mary. Oh, hello, Mary. Why, what's the matter? Has that horrible old man been beating you? He's not old. Now, child, these things happen and we must... Oh. So we're having enough trouble. And stop scratching yourself, woman. I got a scratch. It's nothing but the hives and it's all your fault. Mm. Luella. I got him, Miss Butterfield. I'm coming. Grandfathers, look. Oh, look. It's Easter. It's Miss Easter. Oh, Easter. Yeah, you is, honey. She's just been a visiting in our coop. Oh, so that's where she wandered to, eh? Huh? Leaning on your cane all the way, no doubt. What's that? You heard me. Oh, hello, Mrs. Butterfield. Look, everybody, look. It's Easter. Oh, uh, this is Sergeant Eric Moore, Mrs. Butterfield. Oh, an old friend. No, a new one. The Osmonds were kind enough to ask me in for dinner. But that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Oh, stop gushing and sit down. And sit on your hands. You're driving me crazy. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Can't stay. We just dropped by to leave Miss Easter in a, a freezer of ice cream. Happened to have some extra. It's in the shade under your tree. Oh, boy, ice cream. Chocolate. Oh, my. That's just wonderful, Mrs. Butterfield. Thanks for everything. And for the chicken you gave the children yesterday. Gave nothing. It was a fair exchange. And I've got the hives to prove it. Now, please get back to your dinner. And you don't know how glad I am to see you, Sergeant. Thank you. Thanks oh, uh, Grandfather, show Mrs. Butterfield to the door. It's a pleasure. Nobody just happens to have an extra freezer of ice cream hanging around the house. Well, I did. And what's more, see that you bring back the freezer. And don't send those poor little children with it. <laughs> don't hang by your eyelashes till I get there. I won't. But I may come over and give Tessa your cane... Goodbye. Hmm. Blackmailer. Well, come on, everybody. Pitch in there before everything gets cold. Sure thing. Oh, boy, Here we are, Chief. Now, how about it, Mary? <laughs> you changed your mind about eating dinner? Oh, yes. Gosh, am I starved. Yes, man. Those are the most wonderful seashells I've ever seen. Well, I knew you'd be interested. 
I knew you'd want to see them. Now I have something for you. See? The wishbone. Uh Uh-huh. Let's make a wish. Ready? Okay, pull. Well, what do you know? Mary gets her wish. Do you know what it was? Huh? That you'd come home safe and sound. Well, when I do, I want you to be all strong again. But I'm not sick anymore. And I'm not scared either. Oh, everybody gets scared once in a while. Even soldiers? I should say so. Eric. Hmm? Here. Well, what's this? So you won't be afraid. It's my lucky starfish. And it works. It works all the time. Didn't Easter come back home? Thank you, Mary. I'll keep it with me always, and I'll never be scared again. Say, where are all the others? Well, Grandfather's in snoozing in the hammock, and Mike's tying up his boat. Oh. Did you have a good sail? Oh, wonderful. And Jeep's taking his nap, because he's got to. And Tessa? Oh, Tessa's in the kitchen washing dishes. I, uh, I think I'd like a drink of water. Oh, I'll get one for you. Oh, uh, don't bother. I'm pretty sure I can get one in the kitchen. How am I doing? Oh, fine. Is that the way you do dishes in the army? Sure. You've washed those same cups four times now. (laughs) Well, I warned you before, I'm dreaming. You know, I can't get over those kids. Did you know Jeep gave me his whistle? He wants me to have it when I'm fighting Germans. Made the presentation speech standing on his head. (laughs) (laughs) He spends most of his time that way. Like my sister. She used to walk backwards when she got excited about something. Your sister? Uh Uh-huh. I haven't seen or heard from her in years. Somebody told me she was in Mexico getting a divorce from her third husband. She seems out to set some kind of a record. Funny how you can drift apart. What happened, Eric? Well, when our folks split up, my mother took Alice and I went with my old man. He died when I was 13. My mother married again. I tried living with him, but it didn't work out, so I ran away. Where's your mother now? When I enlisted, she was in Chicago. I had to write for my birth certificate. Eric. Hmm? How'd you spend your furlough? Raising Cain in Miami, or trying to. You sure can feel alone in a town like that. Didn't you have any friends you could have gone home with? Oh, sure, but nobody wants outsiders around when they're saying goodbye to their folks. You're going over soon, aren't you? Yeah. You don't know what a difference it makes having someone to say goodbye to. I wouldn't trade one second of today for all the other good times I've ever had. But we've just started. As soon as it gets dark, we'll go down on the point and build a fire and have a picnic supper. Oh, swell. That'll be swell. Now, come on. Let's get these dishes done. We're going to need more wood. Not half enough wood here for a campfire. I'll get it, Grandfathers. I'll help, Barry. Me too. Me too. Oh, sit down, you kids. Tessa. So uh, show the sergeant where you can find some firewood. It's a pretty long walk, sergeant. Well, that's swell. I mean, that's swell. Not much further. That's a patch of pines down the beach. Eric, hmm? about what you told me. What do you mean about my folks? Mm-hmm. Some nerve unloading all that on you. I wouldn't have, except you've all made me feel like I belong to you. What a family. Tessa, when I think, what if the kids hadn't been waiting just as I happen to walk by? We might never have met. Was it only this noon? I feel like I've known you forever. There's something you don't know about me. What? See that old ruined hotel over there? Uh Uh-huh. Well, come on, I'll show you. My own special private hotel. What do you think of it? Very snazzy indeed. I come here all the time. Dad's here. You like the music? Boy, what a band. Well, what are we waiting for? Some people would say we were trying to dance on sand. Some people would be crazy. Oh, I knew you wouldn't think it was silly, (laughs) pretending. I'm going to do a lot of pretending from now on. Like what? Oh, like as if your family's mine. Oh, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. Oh, yes, I do. And stay just as you are till I get back, will you? Do you mind if we become just a little less poor? What are you talking about? You're the richest people I know. You've got the kind of wealth nobody can take away. What did you say? I said you had the kind of wealth nobody could take away. Nobody but ourselves. Oh, Eric, you've made me understand something. I have? You've made me see what's really important. What makes me, me. Why, without the family, I wouldn't be myself. I'd be somebody entirely different. I don't know what, if anything, I'd be building. But it wouldn't be any more important or beautiful than what grandfathers and the children and I have built together. Good and bad. I certainly would be someone different. Someone I might not like at all. 
Oh, Eric, thank you. <laughs> You're certainly welcome, but... You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> well, it's this. Your coming to dinner today has determined my whole life. I know now how I want to live it. How do you? Well, I can't tell you now, Eric. But I'll explain it all to you in the letters I'm going to write to hey, you. Hey, Tessa, Eric! Oh, gosh, firewood. What is it, Michael? Mr. York is here. He's going to take us all into town to the arcade. Come on, hurry up. Grandfather says we're going to the arcade and have our picture. All right now, folks, if you just hold those poses for one second. Jeep, stop it now. Hold still. Yes, ma'am. Now, if the old gentleman will smile like this. That's it, that's it. A very nice group. Oh, dear. Now what? The little girl. Is that a chicken she's got? Oh, we've got to have the chicken. That's Miss Easter. Uh, all right, everybody. Look straight ahead. Now, one, two. There we are. Now, the picture will be all ready in about five minutes. Thank you very much. I'll wait for it. There's a shooting gallery next door, Eric. Well, what are we waiting for, Tessa? By all means. Come along, Harry. Chief. <laughs> Wonderful, Mike. All right, Tessa, you're next. Oh, no, not me. I don't even know. Here, here, I'll show you how. Uh, excuse me, I'll have to put my arm around you like this, the other arm around you like that. No, 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 don't look at me. Look down the barrel through the sight. When you're on a target like this, you... I hit it! I hit it! <laughs> Tessa got a jab! She got a jab! Of course, she's wonderful. Another loud bud? Oh, yeah, wait. Wait, I've got to give you a bill. Oh, what's that, Eric? In your wallet? Identification bracelet. Why don't you wear it? Oh, I broke the clasp. Besides, it's too small. Oh, would you keep it for me? Well, sure. Thank you. Well, here it is. <laughs> Here's our picture. <laughs> and we're giving it to Eric. Oh, gosh, thanks. <laughs> Wait a second, what's that? What's what? Well, don't you hear him? I think they're rounding us up. And look, army trucks. Look at all oh, the army trucks. Oh, personnel 194, Army Command, report to the field at once. All right, you guys in the truck, come on. On the truck. Yes, sir. All oh, passes and follows cancel. Back to the field, there's a truck out there. Okay. All oh, passes and follows cancel. Report to drove the field. Oh, no, not yet. Yes, now. Short and snappy, Sergeant Moore. Those are orders. Yes, sir. Well, so long, Chief. So long, come Mike. On, on, on. Goodbye, Mary. And remember. I'll remember, Eric. So long, Mike. Goodbye, Eric. Grandfathers? Good luck, son. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Tessa? Goodbye, Eric. And write. Write to me. I'll let you know the address. I will. Uh, Tessa, do you mind if I... Oh, no, Eric. I was hoping you would. Wait, in, in front of everybody? In front of the whole cockeyed world. Oh, my. All right, break it up, Sasha. You're blocking the traffic. Eric, you think this means... Yes, I think so. If it does, I'll have the pilot dip his wings again. Let's go, Sergeant. Eric, here, you forgot your packages. Oh. Cake and fried chicken. Oh, gee, thanks. Well, goodbye. All goodbye, right, everybody. Sergeant, the truck. Everybody make it snappy. Come on. <laughs> hey, you guys. Uh, what is it? Pass this around. What? What is it? Hey, strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake. Here, help yourself. My girl made it. And here, fried chicken. Fried chicken. Holy cats. <laughs> yeah, my girl made that, too. Hey, more. She got a sister? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, help yourselves. Make yourselves right at home. Hey, look. Here's a picture. Let me the whole see. family. Boy, what a family. You're a pretty lucky guy, Moore. Yeah. And don't I know it. Say, Charlie. Yeah? Who do I see about my allotment check? I don't know. See the captain. See Adams. Okay. As soon as I get back, I want to see about an allotment for my family. My family. They're coming. Look, the bombers. Bombers, Tessa, bombers. Yes, yes, I see. He's dipping his wings. Come back, Eric. Come back home. I'm coming back, Tessa. I'm coming back. Back to my family. And now, before Mr. Lasky brings our stars back for their curtain calls, let's do a little figuring. How many dishes do you use a day? Count up the plates, cups, saucers, and glassware, and don't forget the platters, serving dishes, and the silverware. Well, if you're an average family of four, that's over 100 a day. 
But do you know that if you use Lux for your dishes, you may find you need only about half as much as you'd use of your wash day soap? Yes, actual dishwashing tests show that ounce for ounce, Lux does up to twice as many dishes as other well-known dishwashing soaps. That's worth remembering. And if you scrape and rinse dishes, especially greasy ones, as soon as they're removed from the table, you'll need even less Lux for rich, fast-working suds. Lux is thrifty for dishes. It's thrifty insurance against dishpan hands, too. For Lux flakes in the dishpan helps your hands stay soft and smooth. Even if strong soaps have made them red and rough and ugly, they can soon be lovely again if you change to gentle Lux. Why not try Lux flakes tomorrow for your dishes? And now, here's Mr. Lasky and our stars. Tonight, we'll disprove that familiar saying, three's a crowd, by bringing to the footlights our three stars, Ann Baxter, John Hodiak, and Charles Winninger. I'm sure our audience joins in offering congratulations to all three of you. Thank you, Mr. Lasky. And I'd say you were perfect in Sunday dinner for a soldier for more reasons than your acting. I understand that cooking is your favorite hobby. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Lasky. I can't keep out of kitchens in my spare time. Well, what's your favorite recipe, Anne? What would you really serve for a Sunday dinner, Anne? Well, if it was chicken, oh. I'd fry it in garlic and olive oil, mm. put it in the oven for a little while, Basting it with herbs crushed up in vinegar. <laughs> Could I have a second, second helping, please? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, John? What's your favorite hobby? My favorite hobby? Eating. Well, <laughs> you two should really get together. How are you at the uh, culinary arts, Charles? Well, I'm first rate, uh, Mr. Lasky. You come to my house uh, next Thursday, and I'll bake you a cherry pie for Washington's birthday. Do we bring along an axe to cut it? Oh. <laughs> You know, Mr. Winninger was right in his element in this picture, the skipper of a houseboat. That's right. I remember as Captain Andy in the famous showboat, Charlie Klein, the master of fame. Yes, but my boats are always tied to land. When this war is over, I'm going to cut my moorings and head out to sea. Well, I hope you stick around a while, Charles, at least till next Monday night when we're bringing to this stage two nominees for the 1944 Academy Awards. Greer Garson and Cary Grant. You couldn't miss with that combination, Mr. Lasky. What are they playing in? Oh, a delightful play they selected themselves, the Columbia screen hit, Bedtime Story. In it, we follow the tempestuous romance of a husband not only wedded to his actress wife, but equally wedded to the stage, two loves that clash with amazing results. We'll all be looking forward to it, Mr. Lasky. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks for Sunday dinner. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Cary Grant and Greer Garson in Bedtime Story. As our war casualties mount, as every day the fighting increases in intensity, ask yourself if you're doing all you can to help save American lives and speed the day of victory and peace. And one important contribution you can make is to preserve waste kitchen fats and greases used in the manufacture of essential war materials. Strain your waste fats into a clean can, rush them to your butcher. He'll give you two red ration points plus four cents for each pound. Sunday Dinner for a Soldier from an original story by Martha Chevens was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. John Hodiak appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture National Velvet. Heard in tonight's play were Verna Felton, Patricia Lowry, Bobby Larson, Billy Roy, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Ruby Dandridge, Dickie Myers, Robert Regent, Janet Scott, and Earl Keane. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Bedtime Story with Greer Garson and Cary Grant. Flowers, flowers, a blaze of glorious color all summer long. Get in on the sensational offer by the makers of Spry Shortening. Eight packets of choice seeds for thousands of gorgeous flowers. Send 15 cents with name and address to Aunt Jenny, Box 1200, Chicago, Illinois. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Bedtime Story with Greer Garson and Cary Grant. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.